a bike? It just says service. It doesn't work like there. Is there oh, a no, thing? no. They, they provide services for us. That's for the environmental compliance officer. <laughs> that's Alex. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I'm that's like, Alex. No. Okay. Yeah, that's that is Alex. When we get to that resolution, yeah. I will have some right. stuff that I need to explain what's happened between last year and this year. Good morning, Kathy. Morning, Bill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was like, it just said services that oh, for yeah. by environmental States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. January 30th, 2020 journal vouchers as presented by the county auditor. I will second. Roll call, Amy. Yes. 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 Move to approve the January 30th, 2020 then and now certification as presented by the county auditor. I will second. Roll call, Amy. Yes. 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 Move to authorize the Portage County Solid Waste Management District to enter into a 2020 agreement for service with the Portage County Sheriff's Department. Did you want to go over that yeah. before? Um, real quickly, just so the board knows, um, the <coughs> cost of the district remains the same from 2019 to 2020 uh, at $84,590.64. The change that uh, Sheriff Doak and I has made in this contract is that um, when our environmental compliance officer is on vacation, personal day, sick leave, or out for uh, training uh, pertaining to the sheriff's department, that will be deducted from our quarterly invoice. Um, and it was something that the sheriff, Sheriff Oak and I pretty much handled this rather quickly every year. It's just I try to work around his schedule. Um, he never knows from minute to minute. So, um, but this was the compromise that we had, and we came uh, to an agreement. We we continue to this day to receive nothing but positive feedback about this program. It is probably one of the best programs that we have in the county. It gets a lot of visibility out there, um, and the best thing of it is, um, you know, it's just it's helping to clean up the county. Um, Alex, you know, I I know the last time I looked, he had well over 500. Uh, cases that he's helped clean up and things like that. Uh, so the sheriff and I both felt very strongly about keeping this program in place. So that's where we're at. In that third resolve, should that first year be 2019? Yeah, I uh, I caught that and I sent the correct. We have a revised. Okay. Yeah, I, I sent a revised one. Um, I just got to I've got to teach myself to review everything because <laughs> I copy and paste, copy and paste from yeah. the previous year if it's just the legislation so i i apologize for that one and that was the only revision that i saw yep, okay yeah it was, i changed it at the bottom but i forgot to change it in the body yeah. yeah okay so i will second yes yes i think yes okay this this journal journal please um move to 
the Board of Commissioners to accept the termination of a solid waste probationary employee effective January 24th, 2020. Presented by William Steiner, Solid Waste Management District Director, and Jana Kovic, Human Resources Director. I'll second it. Roll call, Amy. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Kathleen. Yes. Move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the external posting of the full time CDL truck driver replacing Peter Tiefel for the Portage County Solid Waste Management District, as presented by William Steiner, Solid Waste Management District Director, and Jana Kovic, Human Resources Director. I will second. Bill, does that correspond with the first round? Yes. Okay. Roll call, Amy. Vicki? Yes. Brian? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. Now, Amy, I need to interrupt you. Uh, the third one, where it's the hire of Jeffrey Weller, the CDL driver, we need to remove that. He called Jenna uh, Morgan last night, left a message that he has found other employment. Oh, so we need to remove that. Okay, so just pull in the first. Yep. Okay. okay, approve the Board of Commissioners to authorize the full time hire of Robert Kern as a CDL truck driver, replacing the position previously held by Charles Dean. Portage County Solid Waste Management District, presented by William Steiner, Solid Waste Management District Director, and Janet Kovic, Human Resources Director. Anticipated start date is February 3rd, 2020. The Board of Commissioners agree that this hire is contingent upon the applicant passing the required pre-employment testing. I will second. Bill, is this, is Mr. Dean's resignation date now? I, I need to talk to Ed about this because with the one we had the poll that's going to change things uh, plus I need to um, schedule I need to schedule a meeting with the union to uh, let them know that we're you know that uh, we're looking at some part-time drivers here so um, I'm going to email the union today I have to respond to an email I sent earlier in the week um, I got that late last night so are the part-time um, drivers just for like fill-ins for you guys? Yeah, people yeah, call I, off I, yeah what I want to do is, uh, you know, I first of all, I want to sit down with the two individuals to see what they're comfortable with, but at the same time, like I said before, I don't want to jeopardize how much they can make through their pensions and make sure that I get the union in on the ground floor to make sure everyone's on the same page and we all agree to the program. Uh, I do know that a number of the drivers have expressed to me that they would like to see this happen, especially if we can use these individuals around the Christmas season uh, when we're just, we're, we're just, it's a very busy time of the year for us and if we can put extra trucks on the road, that just helps everyone out tremendously. So Bill, how many drivers are we down? It seems like every week we get someone yeah, leaving. Yeah, we, I mean, we, how's that impacting? Well, we're, we're working a little bit longer. Um, you know, we've had two retirements. We just had another person uh, resign. He found another job. Um, I'm just thinking that for, for some people, it's just, um, I'm finding with some of the younger drivers, uh, they want the big money now, uh, you know, as yeah. you try to explain to them the benefit of our pension program, uh, you know, if you stay with us for 30 years, you know, there's, there's the pension, the benefits start. Uh, probably the one that we struggle the most with is the night driver. Um, that goes and they, dumps everything. That goes and dumps. While it's the easiest job in the district, it's also the one with the worst hours. So I'm, I'm going to try to set this meeting up to the union to discuss a few things, and that's going to be one of them where we may have to make more of an incentive to be on that. Um, and uh, that's probably the one that we have the most difficulty keeping built. And, and when I hear you say that the guys are working extra hours, Aren't they limited on the number of hours they can for their CDL licenses? Only, only if they are working for a private company. We, we're, we are not limited as a county agency. That's what our research is. Um, I mean, it's not like we can work them, you know, 24-7, but we can't extend the hours. But it's well, their license, not the right. counties. Well, Don, Don did some research on that, and I'll have her. I think we too. should double check that for sure, just yeah. because make sure you know, because it's their license, right. not ours. When I hear they're working on hours, and I know because I've received calls, to people complaining that they're in the neighborhoods at eight thirty, nine at night, because you know trucks mm -hmm. break down, you have to go all over God's creation and get right. parts. But right. can you check into that because yep. I'll have Don send it to you today. Okay. 
roll call on that motion, Amy. Um, Vicki? Yes. Serena? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. All right, on the discussion. Discussion. Uh, <coughs> we have nothing pending. Uh, Brimfield, um, I was made aware late last night that there was a post on Facebook that I have not seen yet. I don't have social media, so I'm going to have to rely on um, someone else's Facebook page to watch the video that was posted. Uh, I have been told by the team that it's running 60-40 for that posting, that people are not happy that recycling may go away from Brimfield. Uh, it's also my understanding <coughs> that it has been viewed 1,900 times, so it's getting a lot of views. Um, my feeling is that um, I need to watch that video, read the post from the residents uh, before I comment any further, but uh, I will tell you that yes, at some point soon we're going to have to make a decision because I don't think we're going to get the resolution uh, of a contract anytime soon. Uh, I'm not going to permit us to continue to go out there and pick up the recycling uh, for free if there's no chance of us recouping our costs. Um, it's not something that I'm wild about going to the residents. Um, but well, I, well, first of all, it's it's our decision. And second of all, I think we're here. I mean, I don't think there's any more kicking this can down the road. We're out of contract and we're providing services. I mean, I, I think we need to think today decide what we're going to do because we're we've already started getting calls or at least i have about are we going to continue to pick up i well, mean that's 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 your decision then. chris do you have i mean i know you gave us our options without a contract right now you're providing a service with no guarantee people are going to pay for that service and there's no enforcement mechanism in place so what are we going to tell residents that are calling because it, in the video he instructs them to call us and to call you i mean just say oh we don't know i mean i think we've kicked this can as far as we can we need to decide what we're going to do i mean kathleen vicky do you I, have i think what bill's saying he wants to contact the residents I because think he's not sure the trustees are speaking to the residents I, I think the best thing to do is we just, my recommendation would not be just to arbitrarily say as of this date we're going to stop service. I think we also need to tell them why. We need to get our, our story out there, our version. We've not been the ones posting. We've not been the ones, you know, putting things out there. But I think if we're going to do that, my recommendation would be to put something out there so the residents... So they understand why. what's They, what's they understand happening. because... From what I understand, people are unaware that this was even going on. Uh, so, um, again, you know, it's your call if you want to end it today. You know, I'll, I'll I'm not saying that. I'm just saying what are, they're going to be looking to us from direction. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the ship has already sailed with Brumfield. I mean, they've got outside counsel advising them. And mm -hmm. so it's my understanding that the only way we can continue to pick up service and even get paid for it is we'd have to have the public hearings and I mean why are we why are we worried I mean we know the residents want recycling they're one of our heavier recycling mm -hmm. communities I guess the only thing that that I'd be concerned with the resident is if we were going to you know survey them to see what exactly they wanted but it's it's clear that they like the curbside recycling. They're heavy recyclers. I mean, I just want to know what our message is when people call us. Mm -hmm. What are we saying to them? Well, I haven't had a chance to formulate that because, again, like I said, I got that late last night, and I would like to review yeah. the comments. But basically, um, well, I've reviewed the comments, and 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 it's it's majority of people are are upset at the thought that the recycling could stop. Um, I received a call from um, a Roger Marshall who said, you know, his family is heavy recyclers. Mm -hmm. They've got a nice size family and they recycle and that he would even consider subscription. I mean, that's how dedicated they well, are to, to recycling. But I guess then too, 
have the trustees ever decided to hold a public meeting? Because they only meet at 8 o'clock in the morning, which most the, the time most people work. And, um, you know, I guess my question is, has have the trustees really taken the pulse of their own residents? Because now that this is out there, it definitely appears that people are unaware of this, they're not happy about this, and they don't want to see recycling go away. And but, but the IR revised code basically puts that on the commissioners, right. not the trustees. Right. The trustees said, you know what, commissioners, you you take this. We right. can't negotiate with you. Well, We're done. I, I don't so think. That's, I, I mean, why I don't know why we're, we're sitting here. We, I mean, I, I've watched the video, I've read the thing. The citizens want the recycling and they want the curbside. They're willing to pay the three bucks and then it's 375 the second year. I mean, I don't know. I, if they're willing to pay them, why not, isn't the contract signed? I guess maybe I'm confused on that. What, what's the problem then with the contract? Um, they wanted to entertain subscription and they were even willing to they, you know pay for half of a survey and they were willing to accept whatever the findings of the survey was but then the district did not want to put the question about subscription it was going to be weekly bi-weekly subscription and so I think that's what but the called. subscription I thought was going to be more than three dollars right oh no it's going to be seven to eight which I was shocked. Was so that. I mean, how would we know? We haven't did a survey on it. And the other thing is, is you know, I think there would have to be guidelines that we'd have to have a certain percentage in order to make that feasible for the district. I mean, there would have to have been a certain percentage. Right. But then this Mr. Marshall that called, he said he would willingly pay the seven to eight bucks because it would save <coughs> him so much money on his garbage. <coughs> Sabrina, why can't the Mr. Shiner's office set in a public meeting with the people of Greenfield, with or without the trustees? I assume that the trustees are the ones who have to sign the contract. Is that true? If they Some, do a contract. I mean, if there were, yeah. this current contract was signed and authorized by the trustees, am I correct? <coughs> Okay. That but still, expired, it, yeah. I mean, if you can't get cooperation from the trustees, and there's some people, evidently, somebody set up this video on social media, mm -hmm. but why not have, just outright, instead of a survey, set up a meeting, say, February 15th, <coughs> or whatever, you know, convenient day, in the evening, or on the weekend, or both, set up a meeting with the people from Brimfield, give them a notice, and find out what the public, because like you said, 8 o'clock in the morning is Inconvenient well, to I think them. it truly falls back on us. The Ohio but Revised no, Code says it's the commissioner's responsibility. I mean the commissioner, so Mr. we, Steiner, we probably commissioners. need to take that lead and maybe have a public. Well, that's yes. where if we are going to, you know, continue to provide services, which is what everyone wants, in order to be able to charge for it, we have to have the public meeting. <coughs> Bill, can I ask, it, it sounds like you're saying you want a week to come back and give us our options. What, what do you anticipate? Well, I, you know, I, I think that I just, I personally don't think the way the trustees are voting and their mindset is now that we're going to get a contract. But I think if the public is engaged, and they show up to their meetings and, and hear their voices because right now up until this point I think it was just a small percentage of people that were voicing their opinions now we've reached a lot more uh, this all transpired from last night to this morning having 1900 views on a, on a video uh, and I even received an email from a resident last night that I yet to respond to because I wanted to do this meeting first before I responded to the resident. But I think I think now we have the public engaged and I think that public needs to be heard. And whether it's a public meeting and I think the sooner the better uh, because a survey is gonna it could be at least six weeks out. So my suggestion would be to have the public meeting uh, I don't want to turn it into uh, a knockdown, drag out slug fest. It needs riot. To be, it, a riot. It needs to be structured. Here's here's where we're at. Here's what we presented. You know, uh, 
um, for the residents. Uh, I'm sure the residents will have questions of us, you know, what's happened, why not? Uh, we also need to explain to them what we're asking for is in line with what we're doing throughout the county, and, and here's why our processing costs are going up. Um, I just received notice yesterday that the uh, processor is not going to opt on the last three-year term of our contract. Uh, I'll discuss that more next week. Uh, but Let me pause you just to ask, so would the public hearing, in your view, be the start of a, a three-hearing process? I, I, I think, I think that would be the time because, um, you know, we have to, you know, 2020 is, is one of those years where um, we need to look seriously how we're going to fund the district moving forward. It's crucial to keeping the district vibrant. Um, and. Uh, I think that should be the first place. So if we engage in that process, which it, if I recall, it's a six to eight week process at a minimum, at a minimum. what would you recommend we do in the meantime with service? Yeah. I think, I, I think what we should do is, um, you know, first of all, my heart goes out to the residents or, that are being blindsided by this. Um, uh, I would tell you that I would not be in favor of today saying as of Monday we're going to stop service uh, because I think those residents deserve to have a plan B option and I would like to provide that plan B option for them uh, because the last thing I don't want to do is have those people stop recycling. Uh, if we suspend service, my recommendation would be not to pick up carts because we, we could be putting those carts right back out. So I would say my feeling is to at least give them a week, a week at minimum, two weeks maximum, that this is when service will end. Um, you know, I'm not really concerned about the trustees. I'm concerned about the residents. The residents have been long-term supporters of the district. They recycle at a high rate. And the last thing I want to do is sit here and say, penalize them for decisions that are being made that they may not have all the information about. What about potentially just floating an idea going to every other week service during the six to eight week period with with a maybe a notice at the beginning that if at the end of that six to eight week period that is one service mm -hmm. would potentially end depending on yeah. Yeah. what we gather at the public right. hearings. And I think that's an excellent idea because again it's all about the residents. No and here's the other thing. It's my understanding, Chris, you can correct me. If we go to the public hearings, we can then try to collect or not for the months that we provided service with that. Do you, is that clear or I would not? I don't want to rely on having to do that. I'm not okay. saying you couldn't, but at this point in time, it's not. The reason I ask that is because we've done this before. We've been out of contract with Kent Streetsboro where we've provided services for like a month or two without a contract, but then the contract always says it goes retro back, but in this situation you're saying you would not advise that. I would not suggest banking okay. on that right now because okay. that, you know, it could be an issue that I think, however, what Chris has said, that if there is a contract, we can go back. Is that correct? Right. We, we get a contract, yeah. yeah we and that's what we've done with the others, if we get a contract. Well, we'll and that's what I was saying, but this is different, so if we're not going to have a contract. How far know. apart do these public meetings have to be, Chris? Like, I we have to have three. Yeah, I'll have to look at the code, but I didn't see any specific time frame. Let me double check. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I remember reading the code, too, but I, I can't We have to give, like, a 30-day notice for yeah. the first one or Well, something. if anything, how about if I do this? Um, next week I come back and I can provide you with not anything but dates, but sort of like a template how this process would work through. Um, I'll run it by, I'll put it together, run it by Chris, and make sure he's comfortable with it, and we'll just bring it back next week. We may be able, in the next week, to try to set those dates. Right. I mean, I think that in a week's time, we could get together a draft process to, to go forward and not not leave those specifics out. Right. I, I, I think we can put our heads together and sure. do that. Yeah. Sure. So for now, for the folks that'll be calling us, we're just gonna continue service until otherwise. Right. Okay. Bill, 
can we continue to service bi weekly? I think that's something that, that would be something I think we should do because basically that will minimize the impact on the district. Mm -hmm. But I also would like to give the residents a heads up, a that. Heads up right. that, that as of in two weeks, we're going to start collecting every other week and then put it on our, you know, we'll put, you know, I, I believe we can post to the township Facebook page, but we'll put it on our, we'll put it on our website and kind of get the, the message out that as of such and such date, service will now go every other week. And, and then list the, the weeks and the dates that will Can we have that in the newspaper too? Yeah, yeah I'll make sure that we do. Yeah, we need to put an ad in there. Yeah. And so not you want to start in that in two weeks, though? Well. Yeah, I think so. I think that would be good. Okay, I think that makes sense. And you should go ahead and yeah. we'll put it in the paper. Yep. You know. I'll work on it. And make sure I'll it's a nice today. size ad, not one that they hide in the legal section because. I mean, half the I people know. don't even get the paper, yeah, but well, we're going to do yeah. it, make it yeah. so it's yeah. visible. Yeah. And then is there any other way that we can notify? Well, I think I, I think um, the social media thing would be the way. What about the robocalls with our when? Well, we don't have that service. You don't have that no, service? We, we don't have that service. Yeah. Just and trying to think of all the ways. Because right. this is just going to... Yeah. You know, we had an issue with this before with Brumfield. We tried to go to bi-weekly, it wasn't yeah. communicated well, the residents race came, and we went back to weekly. Right. So I just right. don't want to make sure we don't repeat that right. and try right. every avenue. Sure, I agree. Okay. All right. Can we table the scrap tire discussion? Yep. Yeah, I was just gonna I was just gonna ask if we could scrap the, the scrap tire program. I've got three minutes left. The grant um, you don't. You are actually past your the 920 is when our Oh, we're really? Next, okay. We'll, we'll give um, you that three minutes. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And I will talk fast, and I, I've always wanted to be an auctioneer, so here we go. Okay. Um, I gave you a memo. Uh, the grant is due uh, next Friday at yeah. 3 o'clock. Um, it's going to require some changes in our program, so we will not be providing every community with uh, their own container for collection events. It will be five a year or five in the spring. Um, the, the match would come from the charges that I've outlined in my, my uh, documentation here. We're required to collect 50 cents minimum. Uh, I did talk to Todd. There are cash, petty cash funds available for us. Um, but we'll have a year to really, <coughs> once we find out about this grant, we'll have almost a half year to kind of put the finite uh, things together. But there is a resolution that is required as part of the grant that I gave you as a draft copy of that if you could give me some feedback this week because only that is that is a crucial part of the grant application. As a matter of fact, there, those are the two things that are missing. My grant application is finished. That resolution and my signature for submittal. I have it, I have the grant written. Yeah, because in your memo it says that you would like to discuss the proposed changes as well as the draft resolutions for the grant and yeah. submit the grant next Thursday. Yeah, Is that because, correct? Yeah, because we're also getting phone calls for people scheduling, and we're going to have to make some changes this year because as you can see, my costs went up dramatically from the yeah, program. Not, and then yeah. you got two of the, the takers of the tires that are no longer. Right. Right, right, and I cannot get the one company that will take them to return a phone call or answer an email right now. They'll accept them if you drive up, but they will not talk to you on the phone or read an email. So I apologize for running over. Yeah, I will get out of your way as quick as I can. Everyone have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll call you later, Bill. All right. So I need to adjourn.